Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. into a prayer tonight and cry for a visitation Lord I have come to feast at your table I have come to feast at your table we have come to draw strength tonight strength for the journey ahead Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we ask you tonight invade our lives do something remarkable in our lives tonight turn our lives around turn our lives around turn our lives around turn our lives around hallelujah hallelujah god bless you please be seated good evening everyone your life will never be the same in the name of jesus Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in His presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why the presence of God should be greatly desired. In His presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of His Spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my spirit that I'd like us to write down that I think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight. Um, there are so many people outside. As we always say, you are part of us. And um, I know that the Lord brought you to bless you. And do not let distance distract you. I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. 
in the name of Jesus Christ you see when God gave man the mandate to dominate the word dominion means sovereign control sovereign control and every religion every movement promises one thing dominion the fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances please i want you to listen the things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives so people fear poverty for instance because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it we fear death we fear guns because we think they can do something to us we fear failure because it does something to us every time man is unable to control a process it brings fear it brings a sense of subjugation so every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we'll be able to access dominion but we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of christ in genesis 126 the bible says and elohim said let us make man in our own image it says let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion i told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation dominion is a reaction something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion hallelujah write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible i said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life the second thing i want you to write is this something i am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation something i am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation there is something i am aware of there is an information a revelation i am aware of i'm not ignorant of it i'm aware of it but my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life number three something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation These three factors have limited us in no small way. Something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives. Two, something we know and information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitation in our lives. Number three, something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it 
but you have not consistently acted upon see the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result see how frustrating it is are we together now so we have three people here one who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant his miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant not even when the solution comes the awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself let me tell you how satan destroys people he keeps you in ignorance are we together now and he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant that's the first person his end is predictable number two is the one who is he's not ignorant he's had access to the information that can change him or her but the person has refused to believe you see i found out that it's not what you hear that changes you it's what you choose to believe and live by so this person here has all the information has read all the books has gone for all the seminars comes for koinonia every week and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results right the third person not only is not ignorant not only has believed but has refused to consistently act now the terrible thing is you would think the first two should be better than the first person but their results will all come out the same hallelujah that's why the interesting thing about god is when you start working with him you have to go all the way to see your progress you can't take two steps with god and expect you will see any remarkable progress you've had you, you've got to go all the way and then you'll see that there is progress tonight i want to teach on strategic kingdom influence strategic kingdom influence this teaching will bless you it will change your life strategic kingdom influence i want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was a school of ministry students we were having a discussion yesterday and i was telling them a true shepherd listen please a true shepherd must build people intentionally there's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every lec the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly i say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say Kai, what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um, additions that I think I should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight. Number one, our spiritual life. Any pastor, any leader that cannot guide the people God has committed to him to really know God, to come to a point where they can hear the voice of God, to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ, to come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom no matter what else you teach people 
if you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for God, then they are not growing. Hallelujah. Yes. Where they seek his face, where they love him genuinely, not where they use him, where they love him. So that's the first area. And that involves them being born again, not just being healed. They have to be saved. Pastors, make sure the congregation of the people you are leading, among other things and before other things, their salvation is secured. I don't care what else happened in that church. If the people are not saved, they are not growing. Praise the Lord. They must be saved and established in righteousness. Where your members become people of conviction. Let me tell you something. I have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low. But I respect those congregations because the little the man of God knows, he has brought his members to a point of conviction. I'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values. Spiritual convictions. It's better to be wrong about something. So that even when you change, you know what you left. Not that you are there today, you think divine healing is scriptural. Tomorrow you are not sure. Today you think prosperity is good. And then your man of God comes and him too, he's not sure. There are times you see pastors oscillating. You go for a conference and hear something and you come back. Ship it to your congregation and teach them. Only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way. And then the members are hearing a lot of things. But they are not growing. Hallelujah. Number two. Every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances. I'm absolutely convinced that a man of God who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of God. He's not only a wicked man of God, but he's a dangerous man of God. You know why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. Are we together now? And then it is also wicked. Honestly, this is my proposition. I think it is really wicked for a man of God to stand up and then say, oh, how many people are going to give one, one million naira? I was telling the school of ministry students. And then you have people come out and then they are, they, are, they are offering. Now, I don't care whether the church is using their offering or not. These people give offerings every week. Even if it's five naira, it left them. Is that true? They pay their time. And then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them. And so they are broke, they are failures in their offices, they are at the lower levels. They can't do nothing, they don't have options. They've not grown to a point where they can be able to say, look, I, can, I want to go to church, somebody cover for me. No influence. Sometimes... We, we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another. It doesn't exist. It's error. And a man of God can be so bold in error and mislead people. Many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves. They are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives. The members... Maybe pay their rent. Some of the pastors collect salary. So I can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service, my dinner is secured. I'm going to go and eat. But will you eat? A good shepherd does not march on his sheep. He lays down his life for his sheep. You see, this is why many congregations are um, is a beehive of frustrated people. There are issues people have that will not allow them 
to grow. Number three, every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership. How to excel career-wise, how to excel family-wise. Every church, every congregation is a unit of family. You cannot have an irresponsible father, a very wicked mother, come to a church. What do you think that bad father will become as a HOD? He will translate his understanding about fatherhood. And that's what he's going to use to lead the department. Are we together now? Every arm robber came from somewhere. He didn't fall from a tree. Are we together? Every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere. All those who are making a mess of society came from family. And a platform like this, the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people. Gives them very, very scriptural perspectives on leadership. How do you excel in your place of work? It matters to God. How do you excel in your endeavor? It matters to God. How do you excel in your business? How do you do it right? Number what now? Number four. Every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships. Relationships are everything in this kingdom. Your breakthrough comes through relationships. The tragedy in your life comes through relationships. Jesus understood this. He didn't, he didn't play with relationships. We lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships. We lose destiny helpers. Money is not everything as important as it is. One ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you. Relationships. Hallelujah. Number five. Every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation. Every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings. Teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it. Listen, let me tell you. The churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically. It's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or, or you know, uh, buying pot or killing cow. Those things are important. But it's not just about doing things. It's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory. So the church becomes noted. Everybody within that territory benefits. There are so many people benefiting from Koinonia. The National Union of Road Transport Workers are benefiting rental services benefiting mtn glow airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be christians but will fight to protect the continuity of koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives so you build people intentionally you don't just sit down and say, I got up and I think I feel like saying this today. And then people jump. And then at the end of the service, you ask the people, what did you gain? And the person tells you, honestly, me too, I don't know, but my, my spirit picked something. You are not going to grow that way. I assure you. Did you know, did you know that I've taught us here, it's not your intention that becomes your reality, but your conviction. You want to be great. But something about your belief will limit you. You want to be greatly anointed. 
but there is something you must know I'm telling you you will thank me in the years to come for these fruits in the name of Jesus Christ I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do I need you more and more I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do I need you more and more more and more more and more see when you grow spiritually and otherwise it becomes there is something there is a name god gives this kind of people he calls them a delightsome land you know what it is like a delightsome a likable personality something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm and so you are well desired well desired I was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project, this project you see called Koinonia, the benefit of Koinonia will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years, not now. Hallelujah. My target is people from ages 0 to 45. Outside 45, you can join. But the target, that that generation of individuals is what we want to target. In the next 20 years, many people you see now, 70 years, etc., in business, in politics, no matter how they want to hold on to power, many of them would have transited. It will now be our turn. Hallelujah. So it's a project. Just like Satan destroyed America, when God's generals were there preaching, what was he doing? To, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them. From 25 years, they were there in the crusade and the children were, they left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change. So the men of God were preaching and the devil said, I, I give up on these ones. But he started growing with them. Channel O came. MTV came. Right? All kinds of things came. They grew. They didn't train them. They grew. They shaped their ideology. They are the ones today who are the leaders. Prime ministers, heads of banks, heads of institutions. And so a system runs. I mean, they play the world like a chess. But it's going to change. I know we don't look like it yet. I assure you. You quote me. I've been saying certain things that I'll keep saying. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will know ourselves. That's what will happen. Don't trivialize the power of the Holy Spirit. Just give him time. He will surprise you. Give him time. Write this word down. Let's begin our teaching. Strategic kingdom influence. Um, let's define influence very quickly. I have a lot to talk about and I want us to finish very fast. Amen and amen and amen. Influence. What is influence? The capacity to have an effect. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone. Please make sure you are writing. The capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone is called influence. When you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior, somebody's character, and his development, we call that influence. Number two, Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Shape 
opinions and move others to act in a certain way change mindsets so the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way is called influence how we need this one of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism it's called influence and i add kingdom influence we have a mandate as a church listen listen we are not just here roaming around wondering what to do with our lives there is a mandate upon us that mandate is found in genesis 1 26 help us media genesis 1 26 matthew 6 verse 10 and mark 16 15 and 16 genesis 1 26 matthew 6 verse 10 mark 16 15 and 16 it reveals our mandate as the church every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass and god said genesis 1 26 let us make man after our image our likeness and let them have sovereign control dominion sovereign control the power of legislature the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth we are god's managers the state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure our inability to manage this domain of god's kingdom We have a mandate as a church. Matthew 6 verse 10. Everyone read. Jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the Lord's prayer. One to read. Thy kingdom come. How? By your will being done in earth. Exactly as it is in heaven. Listen. Heaven is the way it is for two reasons. One, the presence of God. Two, a culture. A culture. A culture. There is a culture that makes heaven heaven and god is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it please mark 16 15 okay and he said unto them read on please one to read Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hold on. The first assignment is go. That means he expects a body that is moving. Action. Go. Then he tells you the strategy. He says, he didn't say go around the street. He says, go ye into. Enter a system called cosmos. Don't just go around. Thank God for sharing tracks and all of that. But he gives you an idea. His system of invasion. I want you to enter a strata of human activities. And when you are established in that strata, he said, preach the gospel not to every human being. Not to every human being. To every creature. Creature. Everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel. Communicate that influence and that ideology. Write this down. Our mandate as a church, not koinonia, I mean the global church, the ecclesia. Our mandate as the church 
is to establish the lordship of christ i will keep drumming this till we get it again and again establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's the first dimension to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men number two to extend this is my concern tonight to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity i'll take it again to extend the culture and authority of heaven to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the christ look up please let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today are we together now so in a bid to teach us and prepare us for rapture teach us about the second coming of christ etc etc right we we push it to the limit and then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste every other thing don't don't worry about building no house don't build any business don't do anything is unnecessary just make sure you love god and remain rapturable and we say that to justify and then we find out that after 20 years jesus has not come but your child has come but your bills have come these are the ones that are coming jesus that you are preparing for is coming that's true but he has not come but your bills have arrived right the need for um your responsibility has arrived we have to be careful the way we teach people things many of us are well-meaning people but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced i'm always obsessed with balance of course we have the other side of the equation people who are so careless about the things of god they are just carnal all they want is cars houses oh this and that and that they are, they are so carnal those kinds of people will go to hell when jesus comes because they are obviously not living with eternity in view but there is a balance everyone say there is a balance there is a balance so we have an assignment to extend the culture when promise was you know talking to us i'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him you cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to zaria you think he just wanted to wear it he was reacting to something within him somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity and so he was a victim of his mindset what happened to him not just deliverance but what happened to him was a translation another idea an alternative structure came upon his life see you don't change people by just flogging them insulting them castigating them or telling them do this when you tell somebody do this the person will not do it he's reacting to something within him if you don't change that's why they bring people out of prison and they say make sure you don't steal again and you see the person standing they say sign here and he's signing one month later they say ah they say honestly this time around this and that and that because they they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people you cast away that spirit and change their paradigm and then you win them amen let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century i really want this to be relevant to us the mandate of the church i think one of the 
confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we're not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today is, is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them, when they grow, I'm sure they'll not even know what a stove looks like. I'm sure by the time they're adults, we'll be using e-cookers. <laughs> oh, don't limit the mind of man. Believe me. Who knew that somebody will create something as, as much as, I mean, hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air, just like that? Even you, you can't hang in the air, yet plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air. So don't, don't trivialize the power of the mind. Cultures have changed. The interests of people have changed. Perspectives have changed. Technology has changed a lot of things. Technology has changed our appetites. The world right now is only hours away from anywhere. Anywhere, hours away. I'm sure that in the, in the next future, or in, in the next uh, maybe five, ten years, I'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again. They will program them to work with your mind. I just think of Nas and his phone beeps. It can happen. I mean, there's artificial intelligence in phones. Phones can feel, phones can record. They can have memories. So the 21st century is here. And what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned? Because the old ways of doing things, even as far as kingdom advancement, will no longer be effective. I think it was school of ministry again. I was telling them, did you know that right now, you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her are we together now you are harassing her so the world the world is is gradually strangling the opportunities the access points we have to reach people and we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the spirit of god to adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate is god blessing us one of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the Holy Spirit. You will become something else. Completely something else. There are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century. Please listen to me. There are businessmen, there are, there are entrepreneurs, there are all kinds of people, families, the, the paradigm of fatherhood, parenting, leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things there are components of the believer's life that must remain constant and i'll tell you where we get this teaching from first corinthians 9 22 please i need to balance this teaching is god blessing us already first corinthians 9 22 this is the 
Bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in and we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy. Now, I believe in metamorphosis. I'm teaching you change now. But that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Everyone read. This is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. One to read. To the weak became as I as weak that I may gain the weak. Are we together? Read on. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Now, Paul is saying something interesting here. Let me translate this for you. Paul is saying, I can become anything to anybody. This is a nice verse for Satan to take advantage of. Meaning, become a smoker to smokers. Are we together? Become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them. That's not what the Bible is saying. But that's what has happened in many churches. In our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century, we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic Meaning the Holy Spirit is involved. Hallelujah. The idea, listen, the idea of Paul here is that I am able to make adjustment. The idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions. It's an idea of making adjustments. The summary of this entire communication is that Paul is saying, because of the reality of my society, I am able to make adjustments. Listen, any church, any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews. I repeat, any pastor, any businessman, any CEO, any worker that cannot adjust, notice, I didn't say leave your convictions. Adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people. Adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people. Adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people. When you become rigid and stringent, forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world. One of our fathers who has done that most remarkably that is a model for all of us is Papa Ie Adeboe. I've studied the redeemed Christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence. I will tell you, the key is this flexibility, not compromise. There is a difference between compromise and flexibility. Papa Ie Adeboe is a man of strong convictions. He's very conservative in his approach to Christianity alongside his wife. But he realized that if I must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses, let there be one redeemed member, I must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising. The key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others. Let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches. And so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative, still adhering to the foundational tenets. And you can see one that is quite modern. In fact, very modern. You may not know that this is redeemed. His job as a man of God is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeemed in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key 
is that we must be able to make adjustments everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or living hair and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now I'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century I've gone to minister in several places and um, when you go to minister in places you'll be amazed the approach of many people I've gone to ministries that are very conservative very very conservative I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox I've gone to ministries that are wild I've gone to ministries that are lawless that one is not charismatism is lawlessness yet in the midst of it i have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions are we together koinonia runs on certain convictions but part of the reason why god has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments are we together now adjustments that can allow people to to come in and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know god for themselves and in that knowing god many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is god blessing us yeah you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no no no, no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this i'm i'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say i'm on a code and you are not sss that's 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 too costly you say i entered relationship it's not love or i don't love him ask him i i am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong i'm trying to explain this scripture i become all things to all men does not mean i leave my convictions to turn into everything Whether you are wearing jeans or suit, you are a Christian. And being a Christian is, is exact. There's no confusion about it. Christianity is not Buddhism. There are exact tenets. There are exact foundational convictions. Write this down. We must carefully study the word. Please, let's write. Let's hurry up. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is found in the Bible timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the Bible 
we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now keys to kingdom influence Ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and I'll give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen, I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence the new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism the advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person, a territory, a people, and a civilization. At every point in your life, you are being influenced by somebody. And you are influencing somebody. Keys are very important in the kingdom. You hear Jesus speak again about keys. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom are the mysteries, the laws, and the principles that give us access. The keys of the kingdom are the mysteries, the laws, the principles that give us access. There are keys to kingdom influence. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praying that as I begin to teach this, as you embrace it, you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you. The Lord spoke to us and said, this is our year of multiplied grace and influence. He expects us to do more. And he's guiding us on how to get there. Number one, the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Mm. We're on our way to better days. Hold on. Pace setting, trailblazing, global mentality. See, we, many of us are still growing. And we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is. As marketed to us by our institutions, as marketed to us by our upbringing, as marketed to us by our Christian advocates, our pastors. We are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years. Our approach, the approach of the average Christian is not global. The approach of the average Christian is not pace setting. 
we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for God but our mindsets are small I have challenged the leaders again and again Koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an, a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? Global approach to life. We start up businesses with no idea of global approach. The average business in Nigeria, if it lasts 10 years, is a miracle. 15 years is a wonder. We don't think far. Right? The average church, do you know how many churches start in January? And by December, they are dead. Because the way the pastor started and was running, you would think rapture will happen tomorrow. And he runs no, no sense of leadership, no pace setter, trailblazer mentality we come into a system and do the exact same thing listen listen there is a difference between a manager and a leader a manager maintains status quo a leader breaks new frontiers a true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit you cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace setting mentality. Hallelujah. This was the story of Daniel. Look up, please. Let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had. It's not just that he was called Daniel. He reigned over certain provinces. The Bible says, and over these three presidents. Sorry, I'm cutting from verse 1 of whom daniel was what please read it of whom daniel was first means a pace setter first means a leader surpassing ordinary standards he said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 then this daniel was what everybody say pace setters this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit. Was it because he was a Christian? Because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible. And the king thought to set him over what? Influence as a result of a pace setting mentality. How many Christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons? They don't care. In fact, they run away. When they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, but for what now? How about God? Is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that, is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41. Give us 33, then we move to 38 to 44. Please, very fast. 
Sorry, we have to read these things because I want to press something in tonight. Genesis 41, give us verse 33, then we'll move to 38 down to 44. Now look up please everyone. This was the story of Joseph. Now therefore, this is Joseph, advising Pharaoh. Now therefore, look out for a man discreet and wise. Whoever qualifies, whoever has that mentality, give him this kind of influence. Set him over the land of Egypt. There is influence for the taking, but there is a requirement. Who is that one man in Egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result? Give us verse 38. Hear what the king says in response. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find... May that be your testimony. That even your enemies will sit together and say, Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can we find a trailblazer? That when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church, they turn and say, which, which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government? Can we find such a one as this is? A man of whom the Spirit of God is. We are reading down to 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, listen, for as much as God has showed thee this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Watch how cheap influence becomes. Thou shalt do what? I give you influence instantly. Thou shalt be over my house. I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. There are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background all this issue of we don't accept people from this state they've not found an exceptional person that's why that's when you see them breaking the rule they will say this is the first time we're doing it say that's that i'm a i'm a first timer i have i have the spirit of breaking new grounds thou shalt be over my house and according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled can you imagine that's a costly that's a risk from pharaoh he says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over how many all the land of egypt do you think that's good for the kingdom do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence. Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where's my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mold. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. influence. Say it again. Influence. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy. 
no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears. Do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family? You hear people here say, I'm the first person to go to school. I'm the first person to get a job. You know the danger? Every other person surrounds you like worms. Drawing from you. You are any 100,000 and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you. leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, my name is Nas Dangote. Even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And, no, 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 no. A passion to excel you are in agriculture you are thinking how do I lead not Kai how do I get my small one mudu of beans me and my wife she's not even complaining you are not pace setting you are not trailblazing remember that if all you want to do is succeed you are carnal but if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God come into that space you are an ambassador always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit and then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you i will never be small i hate it and it is for the kingdom number two the second key to kingdom influence is character you want to command kingdom influence in our generation today you need character everybody say character what is character christ likeness moral uprightness second peter chapter one from verse five to nine talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down. We may not have time to look at it. Listen. Brothers and sisters, please look at me. If you want to be global, those outside, please pay attention. If you want to go far in business, in ministry, in your career, you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life. The Bible says, listen to me. The Bible says, um, all things are lawful. But not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character, moral uprightness. From the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you behave. You want to be a leader, you are in a place they are sharing food. Ah, I have not got you. You are just stretching. You are not a leader. God cannot promote you to disgrace him like that. There is a decorum. There is a protocol for great people. I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life. 
but you must be disciplined you are dressing you iron your clothes you talk well you see people you greet them you don't see somebody like our daddy here and say ah daddy how are you prof you know as if you are talking to to yourself no. character there are many people who do not have character moral uprightness you see an elderly woman moving your mother something you cannot help her pick up the load no character there's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away we we associate youthfulness to wildness that means if you are temperate people think you are too cold be wild You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen, but it's a weight. The students are watching you. The next day, they come with it too. You sag your jeans. A teacher, you see jeans with, um, um, uh, what they call it? all kinds of there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere i mean there's nothing for the imagination believe me if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it joshua selman is saying it write it mark me something is wrong with that kind of thing you won't go far with it i'll preach oh <laughs> hallelujah see there is a protocol to greatness you must give up something to go up you cannot go up with everything you wear with down it's, it, you are down because a weight held you if you are ready to move up be ready to drop some things vulgar communications don't speak intelligently many of us today cannot construct a good letter a proposal because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us. You are writing something to apply for a job. You are writing you as you. Four as letter four. You see that? I need a job from you. Thanks. And the manager looks at it and says, look at, look at all this nuisance to our company. We have labored to build ourselves. And these people are coming to destroy us. See, our generation interprets modesty as weakness. When your life is temperate, you feel guilty for it. Because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of. Those people will not last long. History is full of many of them. Prison cells are full of many of them. They created their own rules to life. Everybody say, I'll be a man of character say it i'll be a man of character or a woman of character yes every bad wife was a bad human being every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being every bad leader was a bad human being you bring in your personality you bring in your mindset it doesn't just change when you become ceo it's an attitude hallelujah moral uprightness you are calm not the person moving around gossiping about everybody saying everything about everybody no only cheap people do that only idle people do that hallelujah there are rules for greatness you ignore them you will never be great the level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life. And they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to loyalty is not a gift you earn it 
are we together there are so many people who see especially some of us young people and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity no loyalty is a product of a track record people probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they they are they are they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to you don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual character there are many pastors who don't have character you just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning peace be unto this house and pastor so 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 bam 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 madam is there tea you think it's a nice thing they are marking you you represent boredom to them no character are you anointed yes will you last like that no that's how we inconvenience a lot of people you now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say transfer seven thousand or ten thousand to my account god keeps quiet and you think he was right he was very wrong it's just his mercy that overlooked it there are pastors who do that the moment they say i want to pray for you what they say is i want money from you moment they pray for you they just say transfer two thousand to my account so that it can activate the faith there is a place for seed faith but many of the things we do that's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people even some of us young ministers you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting they are looking at you you have to talk for five minutes for them to eat to loosen up and say oh this guy this guy looks very cultured character you get to somebody's house in five minutes you have entered their kitchen they are prime plantain you carry one you eat you go out they are watching you there are some of us like this i must talk to you i want you to become something and we must curb these things don't do that say no 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 we are free they always allow me no see let me tell you part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good you must see there are certain things that is like Esau. You are trading your bed right for it. There are times people have carried fat seeds and, and checks, something to give me. And the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. Because in their minds, they are feeling guilty. They are not just blessing me out of conviction. They just feel tall. This man of God has prayed. And you see them, I'm ready to go. And you see them pinching themselves, giving signs. And somebody will enter and they come out. And then I tell them, I say, no, 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 no. I receive it, I bless it, and I sow it back. And it's, ah, man of God, can we have your number, please? Honestly, you see that? You have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you, your convictions are greater than money. For some of us, Abba, you collect and count it and say, Abba, madam, you too. Abba, what is all this? How much is my transport from where I left? I did night vigil, deliverance, the money. You are dropping 10,000, you drop it on the table there and say, madam, add something are you fake no but you are a suspect it's easy for people to think you went to collect power some of us the way we dress uh, now please um don't 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 feel bad I'm, I'm just trying to work on you i've seen men of god and um, please i'm not uh i wish i don't have to preach this but i have to obey god from your hairstyle the way you look you look like a thief you look like i mean the way you are dressing and even when you are talking people are afraid they are not at ease honestly you may not be you may be the nicest person available but something about your lack of character and environment you tell a lady i want to see you she's shaking because she doesn't even know what can happen I want you to be on a project that you must be trusted be on a project be trustworthy not perfection but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy when people commit their loyalty to you it's a trust you don't disappoint it how many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people loyalty is a trust brothers and sisters so God is talking to some of us now who are careless with little, little things. You just sit down and send a text to four or five sisters. You make jollof rice for me. You, my birthday is coming by June. I want 
a suit some you buy uh, this and that there are men of god that do that i'm sorry if if you are in that category forgive me but it's wrong i cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department all of you bring hundred hundred thousand my birthday is coming in june choir you bring bring buy me shoe uh, all the pastors <laughs> Pastor Femi and Alpha, and you who have congregation, so you people, you ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people. Sometimes we do these things sincerely, but I'm telling you now, there is need for adjustment. Don't do that. See, bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are. They will surprise you. They will surprise you. There is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you. Amen. Let's go to the next point. Some of you don't seem to like this point. The third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence. Excellence. What is excellence? The quality of doing things well. The quality of doing things well. Write this down. The difference most times is not what you do, but how you do it. The difference, brothers and sisters, that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for babbing is different for carving is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that the, i think it was oga jordan he should be here he went to abuja also and then he went to bab somewhere with his brother and they paid three thousand they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin ten naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid three thousand and then you watch match But listen, it's excellent. So you will be rewarded. When you are excellent, you name your price. You see that? What you are doing now, are you excellent in it? Please let me talk to us. I salute, I know many people in Koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things. But I want to challenge you, are you excellent? Oh, you make kunu. You think he's small, but are you excellent? Why don't you think of a way of doing it very well? Don't say kunu is not nice. If you make it well, I will buy it. I think someone in the protocol, he has um, some popcorn machines on campus. And then I told him, I said, I want to taste your popcorn. Let me see what and what do you put there. And he was telling me what he said. All that one is stories. Bring it. Let me taste. Let me know whether you are excellent. See, let me tell you something. The minimum standard in our world today is excellence. Even if you don't have the finance to grow into it, have the mindset first. So you have only one clot. And that one clot will make it look as if you are not excellent. You are because already you, you've had an ideology of excellence. You iron it. You look smart. It's not doing ministry that makes you excel. It's how you do it. It's not preaching that makes you excel. It's how you preach. It's not doing business that makes customers come to you. It's how you do it. It's not doing your job that makes you excel, but how you do it. Exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people they are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized excellence say i'll be excellent say it again i'll be excellent number four 
give me a few minutes here and we'll pray open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear <clears throat> the fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days on common results is one of the greatest key greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence john 15 verse 8 listen i will share with you certain things about results today that will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay hearing is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable results he says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results pay setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down on common supernatural result is the end of all argument on common supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god waiting for their manifestation i tell you i feel the anointing of the spirit as i'm talking about this something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all arguments write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances oh hallelujah i'm a believer in the word of god results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence mark zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control on common supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we were there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah 
two man was looking at me and now I, I started feeling embarrassed I said madam do I know she said you are pastor Joshua I said yes I said ah well done sir and I looked I said madam how are we you know I was playing with her little boy and I said where do I know you and the woman just nodded she said she was going to tell me a little story and she said I came for counseling two years ago looking as wretched as anything a single mom with a child no hope for marriage finances crashing everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they would send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind is god speaking to us results pastors produce results produce results you know why our prayer department by the grace of god is like it's like second koinonia it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results they are praying and they are seeing results nobody will come and spend two three hours here just like that people are not idiots results by the time your life listen i don't care how much you pray or fast if there is no result you'll be frustrated the end of your work with god is that god ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit you can produce some common results fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over sing one time fill me up till i overflow i want to run have a passion i like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results you are a pastor no results no healings no miracles no salvation no transformation and you explain away and say it's because i'm telling the truth people are not coming all those things are flimsy excuses results when a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle that's results there are some results you cannot argue with. No. No. You're a businessman. Don't worry that people don't believe in you. My brother, produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody. Even if all you are doing is packing sock away, just produce results. Let me tell you something. It's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show. Because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness. Not your words. I can do this. I am this and that. No. I can pray. Where is the fruit of the prayer? I can fast. Where is the fruit of the fasting? I am warded. Where is it? Results. You want to command influence in our world today. You need results. You need results. This is the apex of this teaching tonight. You need results. Supernatural results. Write the following things about results. Results are a product of correct understanding 
and application of laws and principles. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Let me show you a scripture that would probably really, really surprise you. Give us Matthew 14, please. Let's look at it. Matthew 14. Mm. Matthew 14 we'll read from verse 23 and um, we'll read down to the end let's hurry up and when he had sent the multitudes away everybody watch this he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone rush media just continue but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary there was a situation those in the ship could not control next verse and in the fourth watch of the night jesus went on to them doing what brothers and sisters the same water the same water was responding differently to jesus the same water you know why because jesus was operating on certain principles are we together now next verse and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit notable results and they cried out for fear there is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you they will be afraid that one will move beyond the realm i watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of god begins to break out i see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust trying to show like i'm, I'm okay i'm not afraid there are certain results that can happen in your life. It will make the heart of men fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. He said, Be not afraid, verse 28. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the water, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30. This is my verse of emphasis. But when he saw the wind boys terrors, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Look at this. Two people are standing on water. One is sinking. The other one is standing. Was it the water? Never the water. Same Nigeria. Same economy. Same dollar rise. Same everything. Are we together now? Same harshness in ministry same being in the north where they say people are persecuted but then you sustain a mystery jesus was standing and when peter cried he lifted peter and peter stood just like him meaning you can bring people to your experience listen there was something jesus knew that made that water treat him that way there is something you do not know that is making your life turn around someone is walking through it like this life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept please hear me correct understanding and application of laws and principles number two results are a product of mastery 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 exceptional competence you have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously. That's the kind of attitude that produces results. Number three, results are a product of diligence. There are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens. Sometimes you may knock for many years, but you continue. Diligence and persistence. Is what separates men from boys. Diligence. Number four. And I want you to leave this. Take home this one tonight. Results are a product of the presence of the anointing. Ah, The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. 
when results become supernatural and consistent then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it when results become notable and consistent listen listen if you produce results for a short time it will not create the effect it needs to be consistent that's why you find out that god can be using a particular man of god or a church he can continue for many years and then one is like he hits a breaking point in the spirit in one year he will step into a dimension of increase consistency consistency I was watching a video of Steve's Joe, late Steve's Joe, Apple founder, 1991. 1991, he was talking to their team of executives. And if you hear that guy's idea, as at 91, everything he was saying they would do, they did. Men who produce results. Brothers and sisters, if you're part of this ministry, you must produce results not just receive results produce results in every area hallelujah when our sister came up and said she got five points i laughed but i was impressed with her but i'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row that's notable enough that's the type we can clap with and smile set your standard so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards i like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that i put in ministry that's why i don't compete because the standard alone, I keep competing against that standard. It's enough to engage me. Hallelujah. I want to get to a point where I will be so full of the Holy Ghost. So full of the anointing of His Spirit. I'm telling you. You don't have to start praying for people. It doesn't matter what you are talking about. They will pay to get your presence in a place. Even if it's just to sit down. They know they will never be the same. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Please fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. Listen, let me challenge you, everybody here. Create a system that measures your growth. Don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself A and organize speech and price for yourself. You're a mediocre when you do that. Challenge your standard. Don't do small things and rejoice over it. Let me tell you something. The key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that. As a pastor, I'm better than this guy. As a great, I'm better than this guy. Those kind of people will never be my friends. Those who come around and start telling you who they are better than, no. Because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises. I, I'm not a product of all those kinds of things. There is enough, the assignment, the demand of the assignment is enough. You compete against the standard God has given you. There is a benchmark. Those who are men of God today were ushers in the Bible. Welfare personnel. Look at the condition to be in welfare. Full of the Holy Ghost. Welfare to serve food. You needed to serve food with the anointing. So we are constantly moving. Thank God for what God is doing through the school of ministry. But we are rising. Thank God for what God is doing through our messages and the media ministry. But we are rising. The result is too small the result is not yet notable enough i tell you compared to where we are going this is child's play we've not started anything the level of excellence is still at its foundation foundation we have not even done anything that's how you challenge yourself
don't sit down with your small business and come back with 5,000 and you are laughing and say, Kai, it's better than nothing. Be happy for where you are, but never want to remain there. Oh, what do you do? I'm into interior decor. Are you, uh, see, let me tell you something. Anything you are not competent in, just keep quiet about it. Talking about it will be disgracing yourself. There are so many people around. Ask them, what do you do? They say, I'm into interior decor. Really? Like who? Like what? How much can I pay you? Is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if I don't like you? You have a restaurant. Can we eat in your restaurant? If we have a guest coming, can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable? I have a church. Can I come to your church and sit down and be sure that God will bless me? Oh, I'm a driver. Like who? Where do you know? Challenge yourself. Don't mark yourself and say I'm good. There are many talented people inside and outside. Somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me. I said, my brother, please go and work on it. God is helping you. Don't produce anything from this. Go and work on it. It's obvious you, I can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this. I told them, who is your role model? Who is your inspiration? They say, he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk. I said, how many of their videos do you have? Not their videos of the album they produce. Have you watched their stage rehearsals? Have you gone out of your way to find out how they rehearse? Listen, you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance. You watch from a man by learning how he builds. You don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs. No, you see how he rehearses. You don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by. is still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence. There are so many people in this place. You are in business. You are the only one who knows you are in business because your products, you don't know nothing about business. You will not sit down and learn. You will not grow. Everybody will be, what are you doing? I'm into real estate. What are you doing? I'm a CEO. CEO of nothing. There's no result. Sit down and learn. Many young people moving around with suit and Bible and, and iPad. What are you? I'm a pastor. My name is Pastor, Pastor David Revelation or David king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me Anything you are doing, if it's not of standard, you see, and you don't get standard by default, you learn. Learn from the best. Don't learn from your colleagues. Your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way. You rise up. You learn. Something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited. Something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access or common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selman what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters I'm the firstborn in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years, they are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. 
I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry is as a result of the results. The level of organization at the little level we are in, there is a formula to it. It's not just happening by mistake. That you come and as many as we are, there is still some level of organization. You don't guess, you learn. What you see today is what we knew yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal what we have known today. Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes. And you will say, Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing to me? For if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, God is challenging us tonight. Stop being a mediocre. Surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them, I'm the one who prays most. That's nonsense. Mediocrity. I'm the one who has revelation more. Mediocrity. Somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says, Kai, but I gap you by how many points? Let's count. No, I'm not, I'm not mocking. It's, it's not a mockery. I'm using it as an example. Don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam. In fact, I, I hear they are going to write it. We'll pray for them at the end of the service. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I know that this teaching is touching some of you. There are people who are seated right now. You can pretend like what I'm saying is not serious. There are many people standing outside right to the back. Some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives. I want to excel in my life. And I want my excellence to be intentional. Set a high standard, Koinonia. Set a high standard. Challenge yourself. When God gives you that influence, men will thank you for being influential. Your children will thank you. I was sharing with the school of ministry students some of the things i do today is no longer for myself if it's for myself i will stop doing some things because i've already created a system that will bless myself i've started thinking transgenerational both spiritual and physical not just physical children that anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated and lot went with abraham the secret place of Abraham implicated Lot until he was blessed. Who gets blessed following you? Or are you the type of parents who warn their children about and say, don't follow this, this bad boy. He's going to spoil your life. Please, Koinonia, hear the voice of the Spirit tonight. It's time to settle down. Myself, settle down. And produce results. Stop guessing over your destiny. Prosperity is a reaction. It's not dash. Advancement in ministry is a reaction. We have never, never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry. Say, oh, we cannot pay for boss or we cannot do this. No, it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of Jesus. But it's, it's a formula. It's a formula. We don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand. It's a formula. Find out what the formula is. Don't just enjoy and say, Kai, this is a rich ministry. Find out what is the formula. What is the secret of the anointing of the Spirit upon our lives and the ministry? Find out. Do you care to find out? Are you humble enough to find out? I always look at the people that are close to me and I always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results. When I look at people who are close to me, I like to know what their passions are. If you are close to a man of God, there are pastors here, be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn. You are always seeing the result. 
some of you come for koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes people are flying all over and just say kai apostle is anointed do you know it is for the taking peter said help me and jesus said i can show you let me teach you what i'm doing that is making me standing he lifted him there is something you can learn there is the secret of the war there is a mystery you can learn you can stand upon it it's not abracadabra it's not the more you see the less you understand the prophetic has a formula the apostolic ministry has a formula don't guess in pride learn those who learn are the ones who Anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power. Let me repeat it. Anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power. You can pray your way to victory in the spirit. You can pray your way to favor and breakthrough. You can pray your way and smash those doors. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. It takes prayer. When the apostles were caught and James was beheaded, it pleased Herod. The people were happy and they bound Peter. They were about to kill Peter and the church said, no way. And they began to pray. Prayer authorizes heaven to step in in your affairs. When you pray, you authorize heaven. When you pray, you activate the ministry of angels. When you pray, you begin the work of creation. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Those who can access the power and the light. Tonight, I want you to be angry with the things that have been happening in your life. Some of us are like a battery. We have gone down spiritually. You must pray yourself to fullness. There are so many men of God who do not pray. And they stand and do all kinds of gymnastics. Let me tell you something. Nothing in your life will cover for the absence of prayer. When a man is not a prayer man, it shows there is, there is a touch of eternity upon you when you are a man of prayer. For Elijah was a man of like passion. And he used prayer to lock the gates over a city. He did not use a discussion with Ahab. Prayer. He locked the gate and kept the keys in his pocket. He said that gate will not be open. Except at my word. Tonight, you can pray yourself to victory. Inside and outside and all around. There are families that have come tonight. People have traveled from far and near. It's time to pray yourself to victory. Pray yourself to victory until you are full of the Holy Ghost the key of consecration the key of illumination the key of prayer being full of the Holy Ghost you become a bank of spiritual power hear me let me say this especially this seems to work only for men of God it may not be applicable for other people but let me give pastors a secret. The day power comes to your life, poverty has died forever. I guarantee you. I, the day power comes upon your life, genuine spiritual power, not nonsense that people are doing around. The day power comes, you have gotten something that is worth it. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them that if not for anything, when you find the anointing, you have found what is more than gold. We trivialize the anointing. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Oh God, you are my God. Early, like we are doing, will I seek you. My soul thirst for you. I want to see your power and your glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Media, do you have this in the trim audio? They don't have it. There will be different sessions 
and I'm going to be leading the sessions. Hallelujah. We are going to be praying in tongues for one hour at a stretch non-stop. After that, when the spirit of prophecy is upon you, there is an anointing who anoints us and all of that and then we can minister to people but we need to pray. Do you have it? Are you ready with it? Okay, so quickly. Everyone is going to participate. We are going to pray. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. Everyone say it takes prayer to command victories. Say it takes prayer. That's what a vigil is. A vigil is not a time to sip tea and take lemon juice and, and banana cake. You are joking. A vigil is a time to tell the devil, Christ has won this. I come to establish my victory. Listen, the breakthroughs that will arise from this prayer session will surprise many of you. You never know how cheap Satan is until you are a man of prayer. You never know how cheap doors can be. How cheap they can open. Pray. Pray. When you pray in the secret, then you make your life easy in the open. But when you do not pray, many of us pray, but we pray amiss. Tonight I want to teach you strategies, deep strategies for spiritual prayer that will produce results. That you are talking does not mean you are praying. There are many people who are talking for a long time and they leave that place with the same misery and frustration. There, there are dimensions and laws and there are rules of engagement. I don't know about you, but part of my request, I told God, I must step into new levels of grace in this vigil. Shortly before I came here, I lay down flat before the Lord and I said, Lord, my personal desire, I know you will use me to touch and bless your people. But whilst that is happening, I hold on to your garment. There is a new level. I saw in a vision a curtain open and there was another one and I was pushed forward. I said, that's it. I must pray till what I have seen. Many of you have seen things in your dream. Prayer is the weapon that you use to bring it to pass. You have seen a great life. You have seen a prosperous destiny. But there are gates. Make no mistakes about it. Your business will not just excel. There are gates. Sister, the marriage will not just happen. There are gates. But tonight, ministries and destinies will rise to a new level. Please, I'm saying this so that you will prepare your spirit your spirit. Rise up everybody. Inside and outside, please rise up. The first prayer point is a cry for grace. Call it the spirit of prayer and supplication. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, release upon me the spirit of prayer and supplication. Just pray. Please, everybody, rise. Rise, rise, rise. Stand on your feet. You came to pray. Do this for the sake of your destiny. Will you open up the gate? up the doors will you open up the gate open up the doors open up the gate Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken 
voice and pray in one minute before we start praying properly. Say Lord I surrender everything to you. Lift your voice and pray. Take everything inside and outside right to the back. Lord I've tried to live my life my own way. I surrender everything. I surrender my will my ambition I surrender everything it belongs to you pray total surrender Lord, it belongs to you. The bread is yours. The gift is yours. The business is yours. The ministry is yours. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. Media, are you ready? Please let me know when you are ready. You are ready? Now, hallelujah. Dr. Cindy Trim is a woman of prayer. Cindy Trim is a woman with a strong prophetic grace for prayer. And we are going to be using her one hour prophetic declaration. She makes prophetic declarations. It's an audio while that is happening until it finishes is a guide the moment it starts we are stretching in the spirit no sleeping anyone who is sleeping hold his hands and walk around with them no sleeping praise the lord because this is about your destiny outside make sure you participate whatever you do be ready to stretch it in the spirit and i want you to imagine yourself ascending a ladder in the spirit where you are tearing down the walls of limitation. Hallelujah. Father, I stretch my hands over your people and I ask for a supply of grace to pray. Grace to pray. Let the spirit of prayer and supplication come upon you. Let the capacity, the capacity to stretch in the spirit. It cannot be by your effort. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? Praise the Lord. Lift your voice, everybody begin to pray in the spirit. Pray like a priest. Only in the spirit. Only in the spirit. Open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues. For as a prince. As a prince. This is not just your normal prayer life. I know, I know normally you pray. You are under a heavy unction. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. your Bibles please Psalm 92 
Psalm 92. We're entering another phase. Verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. I want us to read it together. One to read. One more time. Horn is a symbol of authority. Horn is a symbol of power. The anointing was usually put in a ram's horn. It says, but my horn shall thou exalt. Just like the horn of a unicorn is always above. You will exalt my he says and i shall be anointed with fresh oil listen the lord asked me to do this before we begin to minister to the sick and all of that this is ordinary oil but there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon this and this loses its earthly significance and takes on a heavenly significance this is an anointing that is coming upon you to bring freshness to your life this is an anointing that is coming upon your life to bring remarkable breakthroughs i saw this when i was praying in a vision and that's why i'm just doing this we're going to be very fast because there are still many other things to do I'm going to pray on this and we'll put it in this plate and the ministers will help will just spread it around when they pass it to you just tap your hand and put it on your forehead and begin to blast in tongues when everyone is done then we we'll begin with the ministrations father in the name of Jesus Christ can you open them for this is ordinary oil but by the power of the Holy Spirit I declare that beginning from tonight they carry the anointing of the Spirit many of you as you partake of this fresh fire comes upon your life freshness listen Tonight is a night of encounter with power. Hallelujah. It's a night of encounter with power. Father, I lay my hands upon this. In a name that is above all names. May they become conduits of your power. May they become instruments of power. As this comes upon the heads of many. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that they will bring supernatural breakthroughs, supernatural freshness, supernatural grace by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost lift your voice and begin to pray and say Lord as this oil comes upon me something must break loose in my destiny are you praying as this oil comes upon me something must break loose in my destiny are you still praying Lord, I'm tired of stagnation. I'm tired of hardship. Keep praying. Lord, my heart is open. New dimension. 
new dimension of fire new dimension of illumination new dimension of victory new dimension of grace don't don't start applying it yet What tired of the status quo It's gotta be more than me it's Gotta be more than me Hallelujah. Now listen, please, I want you to know that this is not an ordinary oil. It has the power of God. What you do is just pass it to the first person. You just touch it and then begin to make declarations and prophecies. We'll do that very quickly so that we'll finish up because there are, there are still some other sessions and our time is already gone. Hallelujah. It's got to be more, got to be more. Father, let there be all kinds of miracles and breakthroughs as your people encounter this oil in the name of Jesus Christ go ahead just tap it lay it on your head and begin to blast in tongues go ahead everybody you can put it on your hands if you want to but go ahead quickly quickly just pass it round, pass it round quickly. Make sure there's enough outside, please. Let everybody get it. everybody. Go ahead and pray. Make decrease. Make decrease. Believe what you are doing. Make decrees. Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Those outside, are they, do they have the oil? Please, let's save time very quickly outside. Make sure you're speaking. My life will never be the same. Please rise up everybody. Let's pray for one minute. Ask the Lord to visit you and speak to your situation. Go ahead. Please pray. here kneeling with a child hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family that came here a family that came here I think this this has to do with sickness this is a family is it that you brought somebody or I'm seeing sickness and infirmity Please quickly, let's save time. We have, we still have a lot. Hallelujah. Stand up, sir. Where is your wife? I'm seeing a lot of witchcraft and I'm seeing oppression in your life. 
I don't know you, I don't know if this is your first time coming here, but the Lord wants to bring a visitation to your life. Please believe me. The Lord wants to bring you a visitation. Memuna. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Memuna. I'm hearing a name. I don't know if that's someone's name or that's someone's name. But I'm hearing the name Memuna. The Lord is ministering to me. I don't have to call your case. Believe me. The atmosphere that we're in is enough to bring us that breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hearing that name, Memuna. I'm going to pray for you. Is your wife sleeping? Please let her come. I just want to minister to both of you. She can return back to the car. Maimuna. Mommy, where is the woman with a prayer house? That mommy. Please make your way to the front. The Lord is saying I should minister to you fresh grace. Quickly, quickly, please. Where is that person? this young boy what is this that I'm seeing I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing snakes all over him this is what I'm seeing it came from you to him please collect this child let me minister to this woman please don't bring anybody out until I tell you to bring them out why are they here Memuna is that your name help us with a mic please huh this little girl. How can such a little girl be so oppressed? You're sleeping. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let this oppression leave this lady now. Mommy, I'm going to pray for you. You are stepping into a new level of the prophetic. Your eyes will be opened in a strange way. In a very, very strange way. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing close to you and pouring like oil. This is what I see happening to you. Like oil being poured upon you. And the Lord says, I should tell you, you are stepping into another dimension. A strange dimension of grace. Lord, make this happen by your grace. A strange order and a strange dimension of grace. Madam, where are you from? Madam, where are you from? Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing serious oppression. An attack is not just on your baby. This thing, you are the one who really needs to be free, not even the baby. You get the point. But you have to calm down now, madam. Let me talk to you. I'm seeing you in the spirit. There's no mic. Okay, that's all right. I'm looking at this madam in the spirit, and I'm seeing you fatter than this. I'm seeing what happened. You were sick. Even now. I don't even know that I'll come out. This is what I'm telling you because I'm looking at you in the spirit and the weight I'm seeing is not the same with what I'm seeing right now. That's why I told you it's not the issue of your child. What is happening is simply translating from you to the child. Come, sir. You and your lovely wife. The Lord is bringing breakthrough. Breakthrough. Tremendous breakthrough. Do you believe, madam? You believe that? Where do you walk? Are you walking? Where? Sterling Bank. It won't be too long. God is going to take you from that place. You know this now. You have been preparing to what? Yes. That's not true. Uh, because I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a referee. 
like a you know when it's almost time in a football match this is what i'm seeing your time there is almost up and god is going to lift you i prophesy it in the name of jesus christ and i'm declaring that let this happen in the name of jesus christ there is need to pray for your child um, i'm looking at this child and i'm seeing something like symptoms of fever temperature we have to pray for him father in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit everything that is not of god upon this child i take authority over it in jesus name madam the lord says i should tell you that he's bringing you into a season of favor please i want you to believe me i don't just talk if god has not told me anything do you believe father bring this family into tremendous realms of favor in the name of jesus christ why am i seeing memuna on your head are you memuna that's your name come you too you are memuna. i'm seeing a name written on her head and i'm seeing memuna is that your name or is the name of someone? And I will restore. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He can restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. Huh? Two things. Number one, your relationship with God. Huh? You can't be one leg in and one leg out. You get what I'm saying, right? Leave all those friends and focus. Use this night. Let this be a night of determination in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let her be free. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause sickness. I cause infirmity. I'm going to pray for the sick, but then I cause sickness from your body in the name of Jesus. And every act of witchcraft, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. I lay my hands upon this baby. What's the name? What's your child's name? Madam, what's your child's name? Destiny. I lay my hands upon destiny and I speak to you. Be made whole right now from every infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, be prayerful. Yeah? Be prayerful. There are some things I cannot show here, but you see, let me speak in parables. You cannot come and collect my thing and pretend not to know me. Are you getting what I'm saying? You cannot come and collect my thing in the secret and stand in the secret pretending not to know me. It's very important. Be prayerful and he's either Lord of all. He cannot share his glory with any other thing. You get what I'm saying, madam? The Lord is going to lift you and tell you, please, I want to pray for your children because the devil wants to oppress them. This is your child. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is spirit. Let her go now. Out! By the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, I pray for you. I'm seeing three babies. There are some women here. I'm seeing a woman particularly who came here specifically for the issue of fruit of the womb. Please, who is that person? No, you are not standing for anybody you came for yourself who is that person let me just minister to the person very quickly please let's save time fruit of the womb because the lord is showing me i just had the cry three babies congratulations madam where is she your name is glorious we lift you up higher There's somebody here. You are here with five broad. Right now as I'm talking. Great wisdom for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha! Ah, I see the healing angels. Stepping into this place. We we'll begin to minister to the sick proper now. I don't know why God does it. But he's going to do it again in a strange way. The anointing of God is going to come upon a lady. And she's going to shout. That loud shout will usher in the coming of the healing anointing. Please don't ask me why this thing happened. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. 
If you're sick in your body, please make your way to the front right now. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Everyone begin to pray, Lord, touch me. Please, if you're sick, just, just give them way. We're going to minister to them very quickly. Everyone will be touched. Everyone will be blessed. that's the end of it my dear that devil leaves you forever never to return never to return listen i want you to know that jesus heals here we have a track record by the grace and the mercies of god i'm going to minister to you very quickly so that we can speak specifically please make your way to the front just organize yourself and um, bring the lady. Where's the lady under the anointing? Case here. Yeah, I know. Eh? Look at, let me just calm down. I'm seeing something very funny and interesting here. Watch this. This woman, I'm looking at her and I'm seeing a corpse. I'm seeing somebody they have already buried. You see her? This woman is almost quarter to go. I mean, it's not clear there, but there's almost nothing here. Bones. Watch this. Um, the spirit that wants to kill this woman is in her son this boy standing it's not like it's the boy that wants to kill her so they went to consult with somebody huh? they went to consult with somebody this person is like a herbalist and he told them this is the boy that wants to kill the madam he got it wrong because his understanding is limited it's not like the boy wants to kill her but the spirit at work in him is what is tying her both of them this is the spirit of death she would have died on the 22nd of this month 22nd she would have buried her it would have been over she would have stopped talking from 19th and died on the 22nd God, you are higher than any other. I can't say He's awesome in power. Come on, sing it like victorious people. I got to voice and say, I got is greater. Hey. I got is stronger. Father, in the name of Jesus, I set this boy free from witchcraft by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause that spirit that is responsible to make it. Ted, who speaks out now? Mama, Berta, leave her. Yeah, hey, Berta, Berta, find her. She looks like a fuller human. She understands how sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect her. I curse this spirit. I take her out of these dungeons of death. Right now. belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god hallelujah the last and greatest session of this meeting is where i begin to prophesy 
that's where people receive the biggest breakthroughs and testimonies we may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but I want you to know that God is going to bless you Peter Adola is going to come up and for the next 10 minutes or so he's going to lead us through a dimension of worship and praise unto God and the moment that happens I will come back and we'll take up the last session with prophecy and then we'll take a few announcements we're done everybody give Jesus praise as we celebrate him Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. And we've come to let you know. Father, we love you. Oh. Father, we love you. And we come to let you know You are the most I God Father, we worship you You are the most I God Father, we worship you You are the most high Father, we love you. Oh, Father, we love you. Father, we love you. And we're here to let you know. Father, we love you. You are the most I God. Join me, say, Father. Father, we worship you. You are the most I God. Father, we worship. Say, Father, we worship you. You are the most I God. Father, we worship. Father, we worship you. Oh, oh. you are the most I God. Father, we worship you. Say to the Lord, you are the most high God. Father, we wait on you. Oh, you are the most high God. We wait on you, Jesus. We wait on you, Jesus. You are the most high God. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. 
lost without you. Let the rain of your presence fall on us. I am lost without you. Cover us with your grace, Jesus. <laughs> Say, I'm lost without you. Let the rain of your presence fall on us. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. We give you all the glory and the honor and adoration to your holy name. Yes, I'm lost without your name, oh God. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. Here is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, say Break every chain, break every chain. 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 Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, say, break every chain, break every chain, every chain, every chain. I see the chains are broken now. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. Break every chain, break every chain, break every say break every chain, say Oh 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 Break every chain Break every chain oh God oh God oh God oh God Break every chain oh break Break every chain
sé oh, 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 oh.
Just open your mouth and just begin to bless the name of your Father. seated here watching are the ones who will be doing this yeah and then you will tell them that this is how you were trained and you will tell them you were trained well the flesh can be tamed you can tame the flesh to a point that the spirit of God this is this is not it's not about the issue of struggling just living there it's okay hallelujah Praise the Lord. We have a few minutes and then we are done. I salute everyone. We'll have the last prayer session and then I'll just prophesy and speak over our lives. So can we all rise inside and outside? I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne I will worship him and give a praise to him alone he who was and needs and needs to come I will see before his throne You're holy, holy, yes, you are holy, holy, hallelujah, mighty one, Psalm 66, verse 3, please, our last prayer session, we're going to be praying, and we are going to be making decrees and commanding our lives and destinies. He told Job, has thou commanded thy morning? Or are you just allowing it to happen? Believers have authority, but we must put the authority to use. And then we compel these powers to submit. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. He says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. I want you to believe in the prayer session we're about to have right now. Very brief, but very impactful. And I want you to pray and pray like your heart depends on it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, when Moses began to advocate the release of the nation of Israel, God's covenant people, into their promised land. When the pressure got so much, Pharaoh negotiated. He said, all right, let, we have a deal. The men can go, leave the women and the children. Leave the factors that represent the continuity of that race, the women and the children. Let the men go because he knew they would perish. And Moses said, no way. We're going with our wives, our children, our cattle, and everything. So we're going to pray. The Bible says, Now Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And it says God had blessed him in all things. Not some things. All things. It's, it's possible for you to experience breakthrough and advancement in one area of your life. But then you are tied in another area. Second Kings chapter 5 tells us about a man who was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a great man. He did exploits, fought valiantly, but he was leprous. So we want to address those bots, those situations in our lives. Yes, you have done well. You are anointed. Yes, this and that, but there are certain areas. It must be total victory. Rise up on your feet. 
I want you to shout it after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Koinonia. Say in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come against every power. That attempts to fight my destiny. In the name of Jesus. I declare release. Of every other area of my life. That is under attack. And I declare. This morning. That it is my time for breakthrough. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Come on. Pray, pray, pray. People of God. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Mention the areas in your life that are pending. That need the breakthrough hand of God. Mention those areas specifically. Please lift your voice and pray. Take this session seriously. We are almost done. Rapakato proso sopre de gerebele de bosch. Embrataka tabalata poco soto pregate. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray for every area of your life that is yet to experience breakthrough. Decree and declare that after this vigil, you will begin to experience breakthrough in that area. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we ward off the powers of hell standing against our lives and destinies. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. When Moses finally convinced Pharaoh to release them, watch this. As they released them, while they were going, the Bible says they met a Red Sea. So they had left Egypt, but there was a Red Sea in front of them. Are we together now? And the Egyptians were back to capture them. And they began to cry. And in Exodus chapter 14, Moses said, stand still. Stand still. He says, the Egyptians you see today, oh, you may have seen them for 430 years, but today, the Egyptians you see today, he says that you would not see them. And then he said, Moses, verse 15, now Moses was crying before God. And he said, why will you cry? Tell the people to move forward make advancement listen this prayer we're going to pray is important because many of us this prayer will supply courage hear me it's time to move forward it's time to move forward in business it's time to move forward in your career are you hearing what i'm saying you are going to pray and say lord everything keeping me down maybe it's the failure of the past maybe it's the lies of satan he has lied to you maybe you are falling again you entered a relationship, it did not work. You have refused to enter another one to get married. You did business and it did not work. And the devil is stopping you from moving forward. You, you tried to give birth and you had a miscarriage. But right now, he said, tell the people to move forward. The signs do not go before you, they follow you. When you take the step of faith, God is ministering to someone. It's time to get back. The anointing is still there where you fell is where you will rise and excel the anointing is still there lift your voice and prophesy i'm moving forward go ahead and pray pray in my ministry i'm moving forward i refuse to allow challenges and limitations stop me inside and outside i'm moving forward in every area of my life you wanted to start a building project a challenge came and you have refused to move forward you tried to get admission you tried once twice it didn't work listen it says tell the people to move forward koinonia i announce to you an anointing by an encounter with power is upon your life to begin to move forward now prophesy lord i'm moving forward 
I break those barriers. I refuse to see challenges. That project is doable. The project is doable. The marriage is doable. Come on, pray now. The ministry can rise. It's achievable. It's achievable. It's achievable. I may have been thrown down once, but it is achievable. There is still an anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Bible says, there is hope for a tree. Even though it be cut down. Samson was a mighty man of power. But for some reason, he was anointed to be the judge over Israel. And for some reasons, he fell into the trap of a woman called Delilah. And that trap costed him his eyes. They plucked out his eyes and they shaved him. You would have thought that would be the end of Samson. Once a giant, the one who threatened the Philistines, the one who tore a lion and brought honey out of it, the one who removed a city gate, God is ministering to some people here. You have tasted power and honor, but something happened somewhere and brought you down. But tonight God is speaking to you that there is hope for a tree. You can rise again. When they took Samson and they took him to the temple and they were mocking him before our God, he prayed a prayer. He prayed a prayer of restoration that Lord, this one last time, let this anointing come upon me. And the Bible says he pushed. He killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime. Can I tell you something? You should know the difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. We live in a generation where every time you fail, there are so many people coming to prove to you, justifying their prophecies. Are you getting me now? You start a business or a company, it fails, and everybody tells you, you see, you start a ministry genuinely called by god no growth there is failure and people tell you stop wasting your time a gentleman gets up and says i'm going to get married and no finances no resources no job and everybody tells him you'll be a failure or maybe a student you went to the board and you saw that you're on probation let me announce to you tonight that it is never over until you choose to give up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I won't give up. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on until my change comes. I will never forget our first crusade. Our first crusade in Joss. You would have rated it maybe a failed crusade because they were not people. They were not much. We saw miracles. We saw mighty things, but the people were few. We were stranded. Listen, a crusade would happen the crusade was to start by 5.30. As, as at 3 o'clock, the car was still spoiled. We are still on our way going. I'll never forget. The driver tried and tried and tried. We didn't even have enough money. We just had enough money to take us there. How we were going to survive. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen, when you see a successful man, don't just celebrate the stories ask the person for the pains and the scars successful people are those who have forced any closed door to open they are not those who do not have challenges are you getting the point now i will never forget that crusade was powerful immediately after the crusade the sound guys were standing One hundred and fifty thousand were to pay them it looks like child's play now but then it meant a lot because even if everybody in the ministry then came together, we will not be able to solve it. 
but we knew that God sent us. I knew what God had told me. A great crusade. The first crusade we did not even have, we could not rent video cameras. I'll never forget the humiliation that I went through from the sound people. It was, it was such a bitter humiliation. Those people frustrated my life literally because I could not afford it. I'll never forget one doctor in chemistry department on hearing on this situation she took 5,000 and sold it as a seed it was a disaster I would have easily given up and said that's it Lord no ministry again imagine the millions of lives within this country and around the world who have been blessed by this ministry if I had given up at that point God is speaking to someone Peter tried to catch fish all night nothing happened he would have packed up successful people are those who are audacious don't mind the mediocre around your journey to success they will always wait there to make you feel like you're a failure they will always make to claim their prophecy is self-fulfilling when you succeed i guarantee you every one of them will change their reports about you nobody has time to celebrate you on your way to success but when you arrive the worst that can happen is that you can be criticized but no man can deny that this is the finger of god I remember Dr. Paul and Enche, 99, right? When they went to Abuja, him, his wife, and two pastors were staying in one small room. Not by will. That was all they could afford. You would have called them failures. Do you know what it means for a man married with his wife and you cannot afford a house? You carry your wife and two pastors, you are staying in the same room. But that's what it's been called today. Listen, I want you to know right now, we are going to pray. You are going to challenge your fears and challenge your limitations. Those voices that have spoken to you and made you feel that you cannot become anything. They may be the voices of good people. They may be the voices of sincere people. But I come to prove them wrong. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Everyone shout it in the name of Jesus. Determined to succeed by the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus my failures of yesterday will not stop me from achieving the breakthroughs of tomorrow I receive courage and fresh grace to face this mountain and to surmount it lift your voice and pray grace oh God lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. No weeping and just for a night. Joy comes with the morning. No weeping and just for a night. The Lord is speaking to you. Joy comes with the morning. You didn't get the admission, but it does not mean it cannot be gotten. The marriage didn't work out. The travel abroad did not work out. It does not mean you cannot travel. The business did not work out. It does not mean you are a failure. You may not have money now. You may not have connection now. Nobody may recognize your anointing. But keep pressing. Keep pressing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. You are going to pray and cry for supernatural persistence and endurance. Listen, let me tell you. You can ask every one of the ministers here. Barak who ministered and Peter Adole, Manasseh, Pastor Alpha. Ask all of them. They will tell you stories and episodes of endurance. Listen, there was a time in my life I was tightening and I was giving. Nothing was happening. Are you getting what I'm saying? Any man that just tells you it just happened like that lied to you. I'm telling you. There are seasons in your life where it looks like your heavens are closed although they are not closed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Nothing like a result is happening. You are planting bearing precious seeds. But nothing is happening. 
As a man of God, you know the anointing upon your life. While you are laboring in the spirit, nobody is recognizing your grace to invest in it. You can be a great worshiper and for many years, you may be moving around crying for just one open door or the doors may not open. Listen to me. You can be a lady, pretty and virtuous. You've done everything you need to do in your strength. Sincerely speaking, you've done everything you know a woman should do to be prepared for marriage. Before God and men, everyone knows truly you are prepared for marriage. All the demons to be casted have been casted out. But no man is coming. And vice versa for a man. You may graduate with a great degree. You have served, you've even complimented on your degrees. Submitted CVs. Let me tell you something. In every man's life, there are seasons of persistence and endurance. I want you to know this. Don't let any man fool you. God is a God of speed, not rush. God does not rush. He brings speed, not rush. There are seasons where you are proven. The Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. There is something called a man's season of appearance. You can manifest before your season of appearance and keep struggling trying to find relevance. Years ago, he may remember, we went for a meeting in, in Kaduna, a very powerful meeting. And when we went there, there was a man of God who was supposedly a bishop. There was nothing bishop about him. When you launch yourself without your season of appearance, the man was there and after the meeting, I, I could not even figure one person who came to say, Kai, man of God, you blessed me. The bishop was there moving around, no friend, no car, no nothing. We went to the restaurant. He just sat down somewhere and was just taking his power house. Nobody was even encouraging him. And I said in my mind, Lord, if this is how it means to be a bishop, I don't want. This honor, when God blesses you, he brings honor with it. When you launch yourself, you will keep floating, looking for relevance. I'm speaking to many of us here. We are at the verge of breakthroughs. Keep holding on. There are times you don't need to do anything new. You just need to keep doing what you are doing. Because what you are doing is not wrong. If a baby, we have a few babies around here. If a baby suddenly decides to take one drum of breast milk, that baby will not suddenly get up and become an adult because he took breast milk. If an old man starves himself to die, he will not suddenly become young because there was no food. Are you getting what I'm saying? And Jesus grew. He didn't become. He didn't jump. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. Life is in dimensions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there are times in your life you will need to wait. Listen, you may be a man of God, anointed. It is true that God has spoken to you about ministry. But for now, all you will be doing is cleaning tables. Be faithful. You must receive grace for endurance. Because let me tell you, hope defers makes the heart weary. The heart of man is, is, is very fragile. The moment you wait after a season of practicing kingdom principles and you don't see results, naturally speaking, naturally speaking, fatigue will come in. You're going to lift your voice. Are you still tired? We're rounding up. This is a very important prayer point. Lift your voice and say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive grace for endurance. I receive grace for persistence. I receive grace for resilience. I will wait. I will be patient until my season of appearance. Lift your voice and pray. Patience, oh God. If you turn aside in the day of battle, it says your strength is small. Lift your voice and pray.
Rataka bala bala rabash, lekata bala bala rabash, embrata kata leboko sobosh, rekata tete, embroto kosoto fresh, lekata tete borodo rabash. Persistence, persistence, endurance in prayer, endurance in obedience. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. The Bible tells us that a virgin called Mary was just minding her business one day. Suddenly an angel appears to her. Listen. Appears to her with a prophetic message. Thou art highly favored. Blessed are you among women. And she wondered what salutation this was. And the angel began to tell her that she was going to carry a baby. And she said, how shall these things be? I know not a man. Just like God is telling you. The same you who is standing. One day you will own your television station. And the world will be watching you. And you look around and say, how shall these things be? And he said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Watch this. The moment God told Mary because her life at that time was an unusual life. And then the angel recommended her to Elizabeth. Somebody who was carrying the same mystery and the same vision. You will never make it in life if you are the only one who looks like you. There must be people around your life that can identify no matter how mystical the instructions are. There must be somebody around your life that can say, although this looks strange, I see that the hand of God is upon it. Loneliness in destiny has killed many people. They are carrying visions. They, they have no other shoulder to lean on. And Mary went to Elizabeth. Every other woman would have said, you are very stupid. Tell us the rabbi you slept with that you are lying that a spirit got you pregnant. But she went to a woman who had been barren for a long time. So, she's in a position that can identify with these kinds of supernatural things watch this and the bible says as soon as elizabeth mary and elizabeth saw the babies the destinies in their wombs leapt you need people around your life that can look at you and say that 300 million naira project is doable how much do you have 10 naira say yes I was once like that. You need people in your life that can be crazy enough and you say, Sir, I'm trusting God for a house or a car by the end of the year. How much do you have? 2,000. He said, You are even better than me. When I was about to buy the car, I had 500 naira. Suddenly, you know you are not alone. There is nothing as encouraging as finding a madman like you. Somebody who can agree with you and say it is doable. It's a dangerous thing for a man of God. Dangerous thing for a businessman. Dangerous thing for a destiny shaker. To be around people. Who do not have any experience. That can engineer faith in you. Are you getting what I'm saying? That you come and say. My sister. I want to share with you something. Don't be afraid though. Say what is it? Say, do you know I don't have a womb? And the lady will not say, ah, what is all that? Say, Abba, your case is a simple case. There was a woman like that. It's not just that she didn't have a womb. In fact, her own was a, a bad case, but she had twins. You see that? That's Elizabeth. You need to call for Elizabeth to your life because many of us are about giving up on visions that are of God, but there are no motivators. There are no people to tell you it is doable. Who said you can't start a bank? Everybody say bank. What nonsense are you talking about? Somebody tells you you can do it. You can do it. You can start the bank. You pray them into your life. Are you getting me? There are ladies right now. This is August. But you heard from God genuinely. And you are trusting God to be settled by December. You, if you meet a wrong person. The person will look at you and say. I have what nonsense. How many months will it take for traditional marriage? How many months will it take to raise offering? Uh, sorry, to raise 
the uh, raise the money for the marriage how long will it take do you know how much wedding gown is do you know how much it means to rent a house do you have 1.5 million all those devilish things you need to throw those people away and meet somebody who tells you i i met my guy in october we married by december 15th it is possible lift your voice and say in the name of jesus i call forth to my life the elizabeths of my destiny say after me in the name of jesus i call into my life my destiny motivators may they come to encourage me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray we call for the elizabeths we call for the elizabeths we call for the elizabeths men and women of similar vision men and women of similar passion men and women of similar vision men and women of similar passion hallelujah lift your hands everybody as I prophesy to us please I want you to receive it receive it with all your heart and receive it with a loud shout of amen the Lord gave me a revelation on the creative power of prophecy and we've had all kinds of humbling testimonies he said son of man can these bones live and he said only down the west then he said prophesy speak to these bones speak to these situations as far as I am concerned there is nothing called impossible not when God steps in it is impossible when there are men but not when God steps in I pray for you right now in the name that is above all names that every door that before now has been closed over your life and your destiny by the anointing of the Holy Spirit return to find that door open now I prophesy it upon you return to find that door open in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life where your strength is limited you have done everything you know to do I'm declaring upon you right now let a fresh anointing take you through the remaining part of the journey in the name of Jesus Christ where your human strength has stopped may an anointing come and pick you up in the name of Jesus Christ when Jesus was about to start his ministry a voice spoke no matter how anointed you are it will take somebody to announce you please listen I show you a mystery no matter how anointed you are a midwife although she's a midwife she won't deliver a baby by herself when it is time for her to deliver she would need other midwives no man can bless himself no man can endorse himself are you hearing what i'm saying a voice had to be spoke out had to speak from heaven and say this is my beloved son and he commanded the world to hear him lift your hands let me speak over your destiny your destiny remains grounded until a voice can speak in the realm of the spirit a simple prophetic word but it's a profound law i'm praying for you right now by the anointing of the holy spirit everything that has covered your glory everything that has covered your your gift and your potential from being seen desired and celebrated i speak right now it's your time for celebration i speak right now it's your time for celebration I speak it to you right now it's your time for recognition it's time for your gift to be noted it's time for men to pay attention to what you carry in the name of Jesus Christ and I call for the helpers of destiny the wine pressers the bakers those who will speak to the king on your behalf I call them into your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ I declare upon you that all the years that the canker worm has eaten 
all the years the palmer worm has eaten what you think is forgone what you think is a waste i'm prophesying to you right now may there be double restoration may there be double restoration double restoration i pray for every family represented here in the name that is above all names not only will you receive visitation i release visitation to families 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 in the name of jesus let there be visitations may the lord wipe the tears of families in the name of jesus christ every project you want to embark on these hands that are lifted i put an anointing upon it and i force it to prosper in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ everything your hand embarks upon in the name that is above all names may you prosper in it in the name of jesus christ i speak over your finances listen when you are not empowered financially you will be limited in many ways there's no long story about it hallelujah cry yet say in zechariah 117 a thus said the lord my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and i will yet comfort zion it takes finances to fund your assignment it takes finances for you to move forward lift your hands i pray for you in the name of jesus every power limiting your finances every power limiting you from obeying the principles that bring increase i set you free from it right now in the name of jesus christ every spirit of greed that keeps you in poverty and penury i set you free from it right now in the name of jesus i'm prophesying upon your life by the mystery of divine supply in the name of jesus may god send into your life people opportunities and resources in the name of jesus christ I pray for your spiritual life after spending time praying and waiting for eight hours in a vigil in the name of Jesus let fresh fire come upon your spiritual life fresh fire come upon your spiritual life many of you will return back and you begin to see dimensions you never walked in suddenly activated in your life in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every church and every ministry here grace to step into the next level of impact grace to step into the next level of impact in the name of Jesus Christ I release a breakthrough anointing upon every endeavor of your life beginning from this morning let it begin to speak in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and worship the Lord give him praise hallelujah hallelujah let's take the following announcements and we're out of this place we thank the Lord for strength for grace to stretch it through now please listen carefully I want to announce to us that next week is going to be a very special program here is the practicum of our school of ministry students hallelujah I think you should celebrate them if you don't know what it's all about I want you to come that means our students will be handling the service everything from beginning to end will just be here supervising and assessing them um, you will be mightily blessed please invite all your friends and everyone to come around time is 6 p.m. exceptional voice training school a voice training school belonging to um, one of our people David Dam where is he where's David Dam okay that's his voice training school and um, it's only for singers and vocalists the admission form is 200 naira the school fees for admitted singers is 4,000 only interested persons should meet him immediately after the service believe me he's a fabulous vocalist and um, he's done a lot in the area of um, vocal proficiency and he's ready to invest and pour into many people so make sure you are part of it project 10,000 is still on please be part of it if you are not there's free but limited um, bus transport immediately after the service 
those going to Shika and Congo, please wait at the projector stand outside. You can book for your counseling. Sorry, I was not around last week for counseling. But you can book right after the service for your counseling. Be, remem be reminded that all bookings stop on Sunday, 6 p.m. And then messages will be sent to those who are booked. Please, if you wait till 9 o'clock or 9.30 and you don't get an SMS, you can call the protocol line. The ushering department, um, Commodore Joseph DK, should please meet the ushers to collect his school ID card. If you're here, meet the ushers for your ID card. And then this goes to everyone who has misplaced any item in the course of the service. Please, you meet the ushers. The Conference of Nigerian Christian Engineering Students Concerts tagged engineering in all aspects of life is holding a program today, the 8th of August. Time is 9 a.m. The venue is the New Engineering Lecture Theatre, Faculty of Engineering, featuring academic, academia, engineering in industry, leadership, entrepreneurship. Um, ministers will be Engineer Abdul Malik, Courage, Professor Ibadun. I'll be ministering there too, and Engineer Emmanuel Obeka. So you're invited, especially for those who um, are engineers or engineering students. The prayer department invites the house for her prayer meeting at Rema Chapel on Tuesday by 4 p.m. Hallelujah. Please take note of our official lines. You can use them. Department of Protocol and Logistics, they have two lines. And then um, the media department, you can also have their details. If you do not have this, it's free. You can pick up one with the ushers. Hallelujah. I want you with an ovation to celebrate those who are worshipping with us for the first time. If this is your first time here, please make your way to the front everyone who is worshipping with us for the first time. Koinonia, keep clapping. We're almost done. Do this for them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Celebrate them. Please make your way to the front no matter how far we want to pray for you and bless you. The Lord brought you by his spirit. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Thank you so much for coming. The Lord brought you by his spirit to lift you. We honor you and we thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Wow. Let's celebrate our mommy, Mrs. Ono. God bless you, ma. Just supported her. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Thank you for all the people who are here. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We're here every Fridays, and this was a special vigil, a special program. I know that your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. We have a prayer and a blessing for you, and we want you to receive it with all your heart in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and let's prophesy over their lives. We speak over your life that is from glory to glory, that you have come and spent time in his presence, I declare that you'll never be the same in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're experiencing the power of God in your life. Beginning from today, the evidence of your coming here will show in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every challenge you came here with, we declare that it becomes a testimony in the name of Jesus. We bless you with fresh hunger for God, fresh hunger for the things of the Spirit. May you go back and experience the honor of God upon your life in unprecedented dimensions. If you have been running, go and begin to fly. In the name of Jesus, you will move at the pace of the Spirit. There's no limitation upon your life. We bless you. We release upon you the blessings of this house. Let everything you do and touch prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Now, we just request you to do just one thing before you come back to your seat. Um, there are people who will welcome you more warmly, will have your details and will communicate just a few messages to you and you'll be back to your seat. Thank you very much. I just wanted to follow the lady waving her hands. They'll have your details very briefly and then you'll be back to your seat. Can you celebrate them, Koinonia? Thank you so, so much. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell
tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.